Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Duxo DX2057. Let's start out the wrist check. I'm wearing a Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 300, and Grug was wearing a Dufa DF9035. I told Grug that I was going to be reviewing a watch with the Starbucks colorway. He said he prefers Dunkin' Donuts. I said they do have good coffee. He said, no, you idiot. It's because they have donuts. All right, let's take a look at the watch. Comes in this box. And I just did an unboxing video. So if you haven't seen the unboxing, be sure to see it. And yes, I just did the unboxing. And usually I wait a bit longer before I do an actual review. But something went wrong with my original unboxing video. So I didn't publish it. And so I did another unboxing just to have an unboxing. So that's why the review is so soon after the unboxing. But here is the watch. And as you can see, it looks kind of like a sub. So this would be a sub homage. And it is the Starbucks colorway, which is the black dial and the green bezel. This is the first Duxo on my channel. I never heard of the brand before. Then about a month ago, I saw a video from Mark from Island Watch selling these Atlanticas for $120, which seemed to be a decent enough price for a solid steel and each 35 powered watch that is not sold on AliExpress. But I passed at first, not sure if I needed to review these on my channel, but later changed my mind and ordered one from Island Watch. I paid full price for this watch, and Island Watch had nothing to do with this review. Unfortunately, I had some issues with the unboxing, and I was unable to get this review out while the sale was still on, and now the price of these watches has jumped up to $279. This watch comes in 10 different colorways. Every single colorway, except for the Starbucks I chose, has a 50-50 bicolored bezel, which is one of the reasons why I chose the Starbucks, since I prefer multicolored dye bezels to just have the Ascension phase a different color such as an SKX009. As you can see, there are a few two-tone colors also. The watch is 42 millimeters at the bezel, which just barely overhangs the case. 49.6 millimeters lug-to-lug -lug with inverted end links. It's 13.6 millimeters thick if you don't count the Cyclops, so it's pretty thick. Has a 22 millimeter lug width, which tapers down to 20 at the clasp. And weighs 140 grams on the supply bracelet with four links removed. The bezel is a 120 click aluminum unidirectional. And the action's good. It's kind of stiff. Uh, the nice thing about that is you're never going to knock it out of place accidentally. But it is kind of hard to turn and kind of hard to get a good grip. And sometimes I just have to use my fingernails. And it's just easier than using my fingers. And then we have the dial. The dial is black with no sunburst effect. Then we have the Duxo name applied up top. Then underneath it says automatic diver and it does not say divers with the apostrophe S because this is not ISO 6425 certified. Then on the bottom it says sapphire 200 meters water resistant and then it says professional. So I think they could have left out the word professional and just left the uh, made three lines instead of four because that bottom on the dial looks kind of busy. And is this really a professional watch? Then we have the Rehot and it has Duxo over and over and over again, just like Rolex kind of does on theirs. Then we have the minute markers then we have the indices and the indices seem to have a little Fotina going on. We have the upside down triangle at the 12, batons at the six and the nine and dots everywhere else. And then we have the lollipop second hand and then we have the fence post minute hand and then we have the Mercedes hour hand of your basically sub style watch. Then we have a date at the three with a Cyclops and the Cyclops does a pretty good job of magnifying. So not everybody likes the Cyclops. I always say if you have a Cyclops, then have a Cyclops. And this one is. 
Plus I tested it and this Cyclops is Sapphire. A lot of watches with Sapphire crystals will sneak in a non-Sapphire Cyclops, but no, this is Sapphire. Then we have the Sign Crown and it's a screw down because you get 200 meters water resistance. The thread action is nice. You don't feel a lot of resistance when you unscrew it, it pops nicely. And then when you go to screw it back down, it catches right away. No big deal there. Then we have the crystal. It's flat. It's sapphire. And I don't know if there's AR coating or not. There seems to be quite a bit of reflection. So I don't think so. But you never know. It's, I've seen a lot worse. And then we have the case. The case is a sub style. But as you can see, at least the lugs kind of slope down a little bit. Not all sub styles do. A lot of them are flat. We have polished sides, brush tops and bottoms. So the case is nice. I think they did a good job with the case. And then we have the case back. Man, is this case back thick. It's a display case back and it adds a lot of height to this watch. Then we have the model number right there. Then it says all stainless steel. Then it says water resistance 2018M. Then it says sapphire crystal. Yes, the crystal is sapphire. The case back is not. I tested it. It's just glass, but that's fine. Do you really need a sapphire sandwich? All it's going to do is add cost to the watch for no gain because you're not going to scratch up a something that's against your wrist then underneath the case back we have the nh35 movement this is your go-to workhorse movement and watches in this price range it's a 24 jewel 3 hertz movement that hand winds hacks has a bi-directional rotor and about a 40 hour power reserve and they're usually fairly accurate right off the shelf and I don't know if Dexo actually regulates their watches at the factory or not. So let's put it on the time grapher and see. Here it is on the time grapher. So I guess the answer to that question would be no. Obviously, Dexo does not regulate at the factory. This one's running kind of fast, eight, nine seconds. Not horrible, but not great. And look at the beat error, 0.9 milliseconds. That's why you see two distinct lines on the screen. So, but once again, it's not horrible. And it's always preferable that it's fast and not slow because on a fast movement, all you have to do is hack it and wait for time to catch up. Where a slow movement, you have to actually move the hands. Then we have the bracelet. The bracelet's a J style five link with hollow inverted end links. At least they're inverted. But look at that flex, and I'll show you why there's so much flex in it. If you look up close here, even though the side links are solid, the center links are hollow. See? That's why there's so much flex in the bracelet. Hollow center links. And then we have push pins, not screw pins. I'm fine with push pins. They're just easier, especially on a J style bracelet because screw pins are just so much bigger and it just wouldn't look right. Then we have the clasp. The clasp is a basic press clasp. Nothing special about it. It's not horrible. At least you have three holes of micro adjust, which is plenty for a J style bracelet, but it's not great. So, here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It looks nice. It wears nice. And even though this J style bracelet is super flexible, it is super comfortable. It really contours to the wrist. And so, yeah, I really like the comfort of this watch. And even though it is a bit chunky, it does sit nice and flat on the wrist because of the way the lugs curve down. I removed four links to fit on my seven and a half wrist, but these links are small. So four links is gonna be about three quarters of an inch. So eight and a quarter is about the best you're gonna do without needing more links. And here's the watch on a brown leather strap. 
or I should say tan leather strap. I always think that green watches look pretty good on leather. And here's the watch on a green double pass. I think that looks nice. Of course, uh, it's already a thick enough watch, so it makes it even thicker on a double pass, but sure, still looks good. Here we are in the loom room. A watch claiming to be professional on the dial should have good loom, and this watch does have good loom except for one problem. As we speed up the time, we see the green glow of C3 and everything is looking really good except for the loom pip. The loom pip is an essential part of a dive watch as it works with the minute hand to time dives, so it is disappointing to see the loom pip just about gone already. Otherwise, the loom is quite good. What do I like about this watch? Well, it has a good Cyclops that magnifies and it's actually sapphire. Has inverted end links, uh, helps a big watch wear it's a little bit smaller. And it has really good dial and hand loom. What are my gripes and groans? Even though it has good dial and hand loom, the loom pip is really bad. And it has hollow center links in this J style bracelet. That's why you get so much flex here. And the watch is kind of thick for an NH35 diver. Do I recommend this watch? At the $120 I pay for it, then sure. But at the $270 that it's going for now, I don't think... I don't like to play the there are better watches for the money game because I don't think that should be a reason not to buy a watch that you like. But even if you take the Chinese brands out of the equation, I just can't picture paying $270 for this. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Duxo Atlantica, and I will be back with another review. I'm going to be uh, no unboxings for a while because I just don't have anything coming. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. And if you like this watch, uh, go to Island Watch, and I'll leave a link for that. I do not get a commission from Island Watch, but I'll leave a link for convenience sake. Bye.